today's top boxing news. Ow! Put me in the yeah, like, right now. Do it right now. Why not? There's no girls beating me. I'm the best fighter out there. Their skill level is not my skill level. I'm I'm the best at what I do, and I'm only getting better. I'm in my prime. I'm just I'm just I just turned 29. I only get I'm only getting better. Only getting better. And so th this fight for me was about having fun and doing what I wanted, and that's exactly what we did. But you know when we continue to grow and we get a fight like Amanda and we get a fight like Katie, you know these are experienced fighters. I don't take nothing away from them. And when I step in the ring with them, you'll see two dominating fighters, fighters with skill, fighter with um, just the ability to be the best. And those, what, those are what makes women's boxing better. And those are the caliber of the fights that I want because it makes me better. And it will show the world why Alicia Baumgartner is the best in the world. My previous video, we already talked about why, you know, neither Katie Taylor or Chantel Cameron are likely to face Alicia Baumgartner anytime in the near future, at least not this year. But there is Amanda Serrano. Amanda set to see action very soon, opposite the ring Heather Hardy for the second time, and it's conceivable that she'll beat her again the same way she beat her the first time. We've talked about Amanda's financial situation, that she's not strapped for cash, and she's not in a place where she needs to go marching to the beat of someone else's drum to make a dollar financially. Amanda's straight. Yeah. Amanda is stable, though. Financials aside... What would that fight look like? Because Eddie Hearn is pushing for it. Both Katie Taylor and Chantel Cameron spoken for. They're set to fight for the second time in the fall. If Amanda takes care of business opposite the ring, Heather Hardy, and I think she's going to, that leaves the rest of the year. This year. What would that fight look like if Eddie Hearn were able to bring it into fruition? What's working for Amanda Serrano? What's working for Alicia Baumgartner? Well, Amanda is the more experienced fighter of the two far more rounds in the bank than Alicia Baumgartner, so experience would definitely have to be on Amanda's side. Experience is on Amanda's side. Youth and freshness is on Alicia's. They've both got power. They've both got dynamite in those fists, but you will notice that Amanda is a more prolific puncher than Alicia Baumgartner. Best described as a boxer puncher, a boxer and a puncher, the fundamentals of the pure boxer with the pressure fighter's spite. Pressure fighter's volume and relentlessness, aggressiveness. Amanda Serrano herself is almost bordering on a pressure fighter. She's known to put the squeeze on her opponents, throw punches and bunches, beat them into submission. Amanda's the busier puncher of the two, whereas Alicia... Alicia Baumgartner being more of a pot shotter, a sharpshooter, more of an outside fighter, counter puncher. Now, Alicia, she can show some spite too, she can, but that's after she lands a big shot, after she lands a big punch. She can get in with something hard to set the stage to bring over other punches, combinations. They're both spiteful punches, but their methodology differs. What you see from Amanda Serrano is more constant than what you see from Alicia Baumgartner. The pressure, the combinations coming forward. Not saying that Amanda Serrano is limited to just coming forward and applying pressure. She can fight off the back foot. She can move lateral, though more often than not, because most girls can't stand up to her power, she's usually the one stepping into her jab and coming forward. Whereas with Alicia, when Alicia comes forward, it's after she gets in with a big shot. It's after she lands a hard counter, say, a hard counter right hand. Then she'll move in for the kill. Then she'll move in and start laying into her opponent. More of an ambush fighter. And what you're going to see leading up to a hard counter, you know, before Alicia really steps in, is you'll see her moving lateral and creating space, using the ring, setting traps. Alicia's a very sharp puncher, a very strong puncher. Those moments where you do happen to catch Alicia laying into her opponents, those moments should not be confused with relentless pressure or pressure fighting. Alicia is not a pressure fighter. She doesn't customarily apply it. Amanda does. So much so that Amanda is almost bordering on a pressure fighter, bordering on being one. I characterize Amanda Serrano as a boxer puncher. Spiteful one. She's got the fundamentals of the boxer puncher with the pressure fighter's relentless pace and volume punching and spite. I mean, that's one thing that I think is working for Amanda Serrano. Her engine, her gas tank, is not under question. Amanda Serrano can keep the punches coming in bunches from the opening round to the final round, whereas with Alicia, Alicia is a lot more economic in a round than Amanda Serrano. She doesn't throw as many punches in Amanda, and her energy reserves. I've seen Alicia Baumgartner gas out before to where she might have to take a round off to gather herself, come on strong in the next one. Alicia Baumgartner's best weapons in a potential Serrano fight would have to be her speed because I do think she's faster than Amanda Serrano in terms of overall snap 
and sharpness in the punches, Alicia's speed, her movement, and her athleticism. She's not gonna stay in one spot. She's gonna create space to try and set traps, try to set up counters. That, in effect, would take something off of Amanda's volume punching, offset some of that aggression, perhaps allow Alicia to use it against her. That's what's working for Alicia, what's working for Amanda. But even though Amanda's some years older than Alicia Baumgartner, I think she's got better cardio than Alicia, better energy reserves, because she's not carrying as much muscle as Alicia. All those muscles eat up all that oxygen, that's what they do. And the Serrano is a lot more lean and toned than Alicia Baumgartner, not carrying as much muscle. She exhibits a better engine. The better work rate. At least the more prolific one. Amanda Serrano really is a busier puncher in the round than Alicia Baumgartner is. And that kind of relentless pressure, it can cause some of the more refined fighters, some of the more refined boxers to start to wilt after a couple of rounds because they're being forced to work more than they want to. They end up getting tired, they end up gassing out. That's what's working for Amanda. The relentless pace she sets in a round could catch up to Alicia Baumgartner as the fight progresses and what's working for Alicia. She is a little faster than Amanda. She might beat her to the punch. More fleet of foot, she does move more. Use the ring more. She is younger, the younger, fresher fighter. It's not a fight that I'd enjoy watching because I'm a fan of both of these fighters and somebody's gotta win, somebody's gotta lose. But overall, it's a difficult fight to edge. Both fighters have a lot working for them. I don't know if Eddie Hearn is going to be able to get this one over the line. If he does, we'll talk more about it as that fight date approaches. Men's super lightweight news, newly crowned WBA champion Roly Romero says, let's fuck up O'Hara Davies, then Ryan Garcia next. Have to deal with his bitch ass. Well, I said it. That as much as Roly Romero and Ryan Garcia would like to circumvent all comers and take on each other instead, they're not at liberty to do that. At least Roly isn't. roly has got to fight O'Hara Davies. Look, I'm going to be honest with you, Romero said. As much as I want the Ryan Garcia shit to happen, like, let's be honest, who would you prefer me to fight? Ryan Garcia or O'Hara? A videographer quickly identified Garcia as his preferred opponent for Romero's next fight. Okay, by a million miles, Romero said. But O'Hara Davies wants to be a fun sponge and doesn't want to shut the fuck up. So we're going to have to deal with his bitch ass and he's ugly as fuck and nobody knows who the fuck he is everybody probably knows who he is right now because i just said it but like i said let's fuck his ass up and then you know ryan garcia next aside from that Ryan Garcia needs to adjust to his new trainer, right? Right. Roly Romero really shouldn't even be a champion right now. We all know what happened in the Ishmael Barroso fight. We all know that Tony Weeks quite prematurely stopped that fight based on punches that weren't even landing. Landing on Ishmael Barroso. If anything, Ishmael hurt Roly in that fight more times than Roly hurt him. But here we are. Roly's got the belt. Roly Romero, who isn't nearly as interested in boxing Davies as he would be to set up a showdown with Ryan Garcia. I'm a tell you this. If I gotta deal with that shit, I gotta deal with that shit, Romero said. Like I said, he wants to be a fun sponge and fuck up all the fucking exciting fights in boxing. Because, I mean, he's not an exciting fighter. All he does is slap. This much is true. A fight with Ryan Garcia for Roley would be a more high-profile fight and a more high-profile title defense than defending the title against O'Hara Davies. But O'Hara is the mandatory challenger. Roley Romero has to deal with him. And the purse bid date has been set for the 24th of this month in a little over a week's time. July 24th. If you're Roley Romero, what you're hoping for is that O'Hara Davies will soften his position on this mandated title fight and perhaps be persuaded to stand down to step aside when you consider the commercial value of a Romero versus Ryan Garcia fight surely they can conjure up a few hundred thou to pay O'Hara Davies to wait in line wait wait a little while longer I'll tell you this much that O'Hara Davies doesn't stand to make a fortune boxing Roly Romero for the WBA title the most he's going to make is a few hundred thou if that so if by some chance Roly Romero and his team and Ryan Garcia's people if they could work out a situation to where O'Hara allows them to fight. They pay O'Hara to stand down. Maybe they give him a slot on the undercard. If you're Roley, that's what you're hoping for. But the reality of it is... The reality of it is, it's not that simple. Nope. Roley Romero's on the PBC side of things. Ryan is back over there at Golden Boy Promotions and his own. They're in the thick of a legal battle over where Ryan Garcia fights next. You know, 
unless they're actually in the process of making that fight, that fight between Roly and Ryan, this is all a pipe dream. To my knowledge, they're not. To my knowledge, there are no wheels in motion right now for a Roly Romero versus Ryan Garcia fight. It's something that they want, but something that right now they're not at liberty to pursue. Roly's under orders to fight O'Hara Davies. The purse bid for the match is on July 24th, later on this month. And if you're Roly Romero, Mayweather Promotions at the PBC, ideally you want to hurry up and get a deal done, agree to terms, because if this goes to a purse bid, there's a chance, what? there's an off chance that somebody might try to swipe this fight from you. If it goes to a purse bid, anybody can bid on the fight. Anybody from Matchroom, anybody from Boxer, anybody interested in picking up this fight. You ask yourself, well, why would they be interested in picking up this fight? Well, maybe they're interested in picking up O'Hara Davies. So long as O'Hara Davies Davies can win the fight, win the match, and become WBA champion. I mean, that's the stake in it for the other parties, the aforementioned promotional outfits, that maybe they're interested in O'Hara so long as O'Hara wins the WBA title, at which point they'd add another champion to their stable. Now, that's just me bouncing ideas around. That's just a theory that ideally you don't want this thing going to a purse bid because you don't know if somebody's going to try to take it from you. If you're the PBC, you want to get this over with. You want to get a deal done and you want to be economically as responsible as you can be because Roly Romero versus O'Hara Davies is not a hot ticket. Nope. It's not a big fight. It's not the kind of fight you should have to break the bank to make. But if it goes to a purse bid, it could. It could at least in theory become more expensive to put on. So ideally, you don't want it to go that far. You want to get a deal done as soon as you can. You have to get O'Hara Davies to agree to a number, agree to terms. And if you're O'Hara Davies, you don't want this fight going to the scorecards. No. You don't want this fight left in the judges' hands. We've already seen the kind of chicanery they're capable of. At the time that Tony Weeks waved this fight off, the fight between Ishmael Barroso and Roly Romero, Ishmael was up on the cards. You couldn't screw him. The rounds weren't close Close enough to where you could have swung them to Roly Romero. Ishmael was in the lead, so they did the next best thing. Premature stoppage. Based on punches that weren't even landing. If you're O'Hara Davies and you are going to fight Roly Romero, you have to be mindful of that. You have to exploit every flaw in this flawed fighter's game to ensure that this don't go to distance. Gotta take him out. Very old Ishmael Barroso was able to further expose Roly Romero and just how limited this fighter is. O'Hara Davies, he's gotta do better than that. He has to. Finally, in men's heavyweight news, some revealing insights into the upcoming farce fight between Tyson Fury and Francis Ngannou. Francis has confirmed that there is a rematch clause if he ends up beating Tyson Fury on October 28th. Now, you can interpret that as Tyson Fury's people covering all the bases in any eventuality, or... Or you can take it as another indicator of how big a charlatan Tyson Fury is, according to Chael Sonnen, oh. another MMA fighter. Tyson Fury is a scum. Scumbag. Chael Sonnen stated, what kind of scumbag is Fury? I really gotta tell you, Fury broke my heart. I like this guy, and I like the entertainment. I like so many things about him. He's going to choose to beat up a guy who's at least 37 with no experience and is on one leg, one good leg. That's a bully, and it's a scumbag. Said it over a million times here on the channel. That's what Tyson Fury is. He's a charlatan. He's a scumbag. For as much as Frank Warren is carrying on that this is a big event, a big show, it seems to be getting a lot of adversity reactions in both quarters, both on the MMA side of things and the boxing side of things. Because Francis Ngannou is not a boxer and he's not going to turn into one overnight after just one camp. It's not the way these things work. These are two very different disciplines. Now, Francis Ngannou himself stated, I have to break Tyson Fury's distance, get inside, and make him uncomfortable. Easier said than done for a guy who's never actually fought in a boxing ring before. You can understand what you have to do. You can understand what the strategy is needs to be, but there's understanding the strategy than being physically able to execute it. And I don't think Francis Ngannou is. Because he's not a fucking boxer. I think he's going to try to play me on the distance and maybe drag it into a decision. I know a lot of people are just giving me a chance if I randomly connect 
for something, but I'm also working on every scenario in case we go to a decision. If they did, that would be an indictment on Tyson Fury. I will have to break his distance because he's pretty good on the distance to control his distance and everything, and I will constantly try to break that. That means, like, I have to expose myself and get on the inside, but it is a tough one, and I really want to win this even if it goes to a decision. I don't want to give him space to make him feel comfortable. He's pretty good when he's comfortable when he's there relaxing. Oh, he's pretty good, but let's see how he's going to react when you apply pressure. Not just, like, gonna land some big punch, but keep pushing. Francis Ngannou, God bless him, he don't know how to close a distance. He don't know how to cut off the ring against a moving target. Limit his exits and corner him, then pin him down and unload. He may be a very big guy and a very strong guy, but he's not a boxer. You know, a lot of what you see boils down to muscle memory. Repetition. Guys that have been fighting in the Emmys, guys that have been fighting in the pros, lots of rounds in the bank, lots of experience that by the time they make it to your television screen, well, a lot of what you're seeing boils down to muscle memory. Second nature. Instinct. Now, in the octagon, Francis Ngannou has his second nature. He has his instincts and his experiences, but in the boxing ring, he's little more than an infant. That's true, then why is Tyson Fury sticking a rematch clause on him? Because Tyson Fury's a fucking scumbag, just like Charles Sonnen said, because he's a nervous wreck. The incentive for Francis Ngannou to venture into the sport of boxing with no prior experience, the incentive is a financial one, and it's an obvious incentive. According to his manager, Ngannou's bag for Tyson Fury blows away any of his previous earnings in the UFC. Of course. So if he's set to take on Tyson Fury and face certain defeat, you can see why. Let's just say this. The bag is so big, he might actually just drop it on the way to the bank, Martin said to the MMA Hour. Let's just say that. I don't know what the haters are trying to say right now. I kind of just block it out. But they'll be just proven wrong again. This is life-changing. This is exactly what we planned and visualized. So we're happy. Why wouldn't they be? Francis Ngannou getting knocked out in the boxing ring is a victimless crime. Though if by some chance he doesn't get knocked out, if Tyson Fury don't finish this guy, it's an indictment on Tyson Fury. It's bad enough you needed to stick a rematch clause on him. The least you can do is finish the job and show him why you're a world champion. Better knock this guy out. We are not signing up to do some, like, go out there and play patty cake. No, no, no. This is an actual fight. What happens with the WBC belt, we plan on talking with the WBC to get licensed. That is our plan. And we never know. We may have the opportunity to, but maybe put his belt on the line. I don't know. That's for his side. But I know that from our side, we plan on hopefully having those conversations and making sure that we do everything in our power. We want this to go on Fury's professional record. They're billing this as an actual fight. And if we are to believe that this is an actual fight, then the least Tyson Fury can do is knock this guy out. Otherwise, he's a bigger fraud than I thought.